folks, welcome back to the Needy Homesteader. My name's Paul, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm from Paul's Rule of Thumb. I have been friends with Heather for a very long time, um, and I followed her channel for a very long time before that. Um, so I'm coming to you as part of the Inspired by Needy uh, project, uh, where content creators throughout YouTube that have been selected by Heather are helping to create content to keep her channel moving forward while she's healing. Um, and the idea is to do things that were inspired by Needy. Well, my whole YouTube channel is inspired by Needy. Um, I wouldn't have a YouTube channel if it wasn't for her. She really is the person that spent time encouraging me to, um, you know, stretch my my boundaries and, and go for it and give it a shot. And here I am a few years later, um, and, you know, I have an amazing YouTube channel with amazing subscribers, um, and many of you, if not all of you, subscribe to both of us. Um, so this was just a great opportunity for me to you know, come to the aid of my, one of my very best friends, um, and create some content that hopefully you will enjoy, and if you do, my channel will be linked below, um, so you can go check out the things on my channel, and, um, I hope you enjoy these videos going forward. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, Cookbook Corners, um, that's what I've chose to do as my videos, so I will bring you along and I hope you folks enjoy the videos that come forward. Welcome back and today we're going to talk about this book. So this is Home Baking, The Artful Mix of Flour and Tradition Around the World by Jeffrey Alford and Naomi, I'm probably mispronouncing this, but her last name is Duguid, I believe, D-U-G-U-I-D, okay? Um, they also, they are the authors of Hot, Sour, Salty, and Sweet, which is a tremendously popular cookbook. Um, so, this is a book all about baking. I'm going to read you their kind of inside cover here. Home baking may be a humble art, but its roots are deeply planted. On an island in Sweden, a grandmother teaches her granddaughter how to make slagbrot a velvety rye bread, just as she was taught to make it by her grandmother many years before. In Portugal, village women meet once each week to bake a community oven. While a large stone oven heats up, children come running for sweet, sugary flatbreads made specially for them. In Toronto, Naomi makes her grandmother's recipe for treacle tart, and Jeffrey makes the truck stop cinnamon buns he and his father loved. And then it goes on from there. So that's what it is. It's all about baking inspired throughout, you know, time and place. So whether it be, you know, your favorite aunt, your mother, your grandmother, um, whoever it is, inspiration that you've gained. So the first thing I'm going to tell you about this book is the photography is gorgeous. So let me get to an example, okay? I'm going to pull this up here. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Alright, so, I mean, this is an example of just how stunning and artful the photography is. I'm going to take the book jacket off so this will be easier to handle and it won't make as much noise. Okay, so this is what it looks like without the book jacket, by the way, just in case you're out shopping for this. This is going to be, I think, a little bit more difficult to find. Um, I found this at an estate sale. I did manage to find a copy on Amazon. It was pretty expensive. Um, so I think this is a book that you're going to want to look for at like half price books or um, maybe thrift books. Um, so I'll see what I can find as far as links to finding this. Um, but it's, this one's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. So, let's break it down, okay? 
So, um, it's broken down into different sections. So the first section is pastry, sweet pies, tarts and pastries, savory tarts and pies. Then it goes into bread. It has festive breads, family breads, and artisan style loaves. Then it goes into smaller breads, rolls, bagels, and sweet buns, skillet breads and pancakes, flatbreads, and crackers. And then it finishes out with cakes and cookies, everyday cakes, and a few fancy ones too, and all around the world cookies. So that's how it is broken up. Okay. Um, wow. Okay, so I think I must have passed by this page before because I don't remember seeing this. So this is really cool, actually. Okay, so I don't know how much detail you'll be able to see here. But this section, it's just two pages, and it, it breaks it up into different recipes for different reasons, okay? So the, they have a section to dazzle guests, our household staples, last minute baking, to feed a hungry crowd, standbys for snacking, child friendly recipes to make together, campfire baking, great for sandwiches, unusual techniques to try, for those who can't eat gluten, for those who prefer whole grains, great for toast, classics, exotic flavors, and to take as a present. I love that they broke it up that way. That's so cool. All right. Now, in the interest of getting through this, without this being an hour-long video, I am going to move through this fairly quickly and just kind of... Um, you know, blast through each section uh, without getting too lost. Okay, so the first section is sweet pies, tarts, and pastries, okay? So it talks about the simplest apple pie, a treacle tart, um, and treacle, for those of you who may not be familiar with it as an ingredient, is uh, very similar to molasses. Um, it's a dark, sweet, syrupy ingredient. So, um, just in case you're not familiar with that. Uh, quick pastry, uh, freeform galette. So a galette is like using a pie crust. You put the fruit in and then you fold the edges over, leaving the center exposed. Um, assembly line pies, fruit custard tart, sweet tart pastry, butter tarts, classic farmhouse pastry, Cotta pie topped with streusel. Rugula. Rugula is a Jewish dessert. Um, and it usually has a sweet filling to it. Um, we might actually do a video on that at some point. Because I do typically make it every year. Um, so maybe when I go to make it this year, I'll bring you along for a video. Danish log. Uh, Kazakh's dried fruit pastries. Um, oh, this might be interesting. Let's see here. This might be one to pause on. 44. Log cabins, quilts, and the aesthetics of baking. Hmm. So it talks about um, If it's Friday night, there's only one place I want to be, and that's at Laverne Baker's Auction Center in Hanover, Ontario. The auction begins at 5.30 and ends well after midnight. I like to go around 10 o'clock because that's when Laverne usually auctions the tools. And tools are my favorite thing to buy, especially ones, old ones, augers and ads and jack planes, froze and draw knives. Often I don't even know what kind of tool I'm bidding on, but if it looks old and interesting and if the price is right, I try to buy it. The first few times I went to the auction, I let some pretty good tools get away because I was shy about bidding, having never spent much time at auctions. But now I jump right in, waving my hand, giving a nod. I think Mr. Baker even recognizes me. Maybe not, but when there is a box of old tools, he'll sometimes look my way, expecting a bid. Nothing like almost being a regular. It's just cool. I mean, it's just really cool. <sighs> Um, okay, I told you I wasn't going to get too bogged down here. Uh, Teresa's Coconut Custard Tarts. 
Jamaican coconut pie, mince tarts, candied citrus peel, cherry strudel, Mediterranean phyllo semolina pie. Okay, here's another example of the artwork in this book. I mean, doesn't it just make you want to, like, dive in? I mean, that... To be able to take a picture that is so artful and so delicate that you can see the layers of pastry in that phyllo dough, that's just unbelievable. Irish curd pie. Oh, this is a heavy book. It's a really heavy book. I'm just telling you. Um, okay, savory tarts and pies. Uh, onion, pretzel, onion pretzel and potato pretzel. Central Asian lamb pies, farmhouse meat pie, easy cheese and bean rounds, New York style calzones, Middle Eastern pizzas, hearty white bean pie, golden mixed green pies, Himalayan steamed dumplings, leaky pie, Alsatian onion tart, savory mushroom strudel. All right, let's see. Okay, here's another beautiful picture. I mean, it's just like, look at how gorgeous it is. I can't get over it. Um, I mean, quite honestly, the artwork in the book is almost worth the price of the book alone. And I will say that I think that the recipes in this book although they may sound super exotic, are super achievable, okay? So, like, here's the Himalayan steamed dumplings, okay? When I hear that name, I think, oh, man, this is going to be really hard. It's going to be a ton of ingredients. It's going to, you know, I'm never going to be able to do it. Okay, the filling is one pound of lean beef, such as round steak cut into three or four pieces, two medium onions, two large garlic cloves, one inch piece of ginger, salt, and soy sauce. That's it. That's the filling. And then the wrappers are made with four cups unbleached all-purpose flour and two cups warm water. That's it, folks. Like, it's that simple. So, even though these recipes may sound crazy and exotic and really hard, they're not. They made these super, super accessible. Um... I mean, there's going to be things like, okay, so the Alsatian onion tart. It says a half a recipe or three quarters of a pound of rough puff or three quarters of a pound store-bought all-butter puff pastry. Okay, so making rough puff is a skill. It's a type of pastry. It's a layered, you know, with butter and the butter's layered in the dough. And that takes, that takes some time to learn how to do. But they've given you permission in here to go and get the store-bought puff pastry. So, you know, it's like, it, it's going to show you ways that you could step outside of the box and really, you know, hone new skills, but ways that it's accessible without going that extra mile if you don't want to or if you don't have time to do it. Um, savory mushroom strudel. What was I at here? I know. I get to talking. Okay, festive breads, challah, um, Ukrainian Christmas bread, Greek Easter spiral, uh, stolen, quince loaf, almond milk bread, um, which underneath almond milk bread, they also have tender almond milk rolls and fresh fruit cake. Um, New England brown bread, Nigella date hearth breads, Banana coconut bread for palm, P-A-M, for pan. Irish raisin and currant loaves. Vietnamese bread pudding. Um, so that's festive breads. I mean, honestly, like, I feel like I could just show you pictures all day, but, like, just look at these. I mean, really, it's just... It's just stunning. This is a coffee table book as well as a cookbook, quite frankly. This is something you put out for people to really go through. Okay, let's see. Banana coconut bread for Pam. Our friend, oh, it is Pam. 
Our friend Pam had just delivered her baby, Ethan. She'd had an anxious pregnancy and was tired, as well as relieved to be home safely with him. We wanted to take her a bread that would help, that would keep well and be a bit of a treat. So, it looks like it's a uh, banana bread, um, but a little bit elevated. So it's got bananas, flour, baking soda, nutmeg, uh, unsalted butter, sugar, uh, white or rice vinegar, dark rum, uh, unsweetened coconut. Yeah, really cool. All right, so that a mystery of Pam. Um, okay, family breads. Uh, Robin's bread, which is like a part whole wheat bread, water, reduced fat milk, yeast, wheat, flour, honey, all-purpose flour, salt, oil. So a basic kind of light wheat bread. Uh, tender potato bread, large batch whole wheat, quick Swedish rye, uh, soft white sandwich loaf, velvety bean bread, uh, Helen's special raisin bread, Irish soda bread, papaya almond whole wheat bread, cornbread with cracklings, Seville orange marmalade, grape harvest jam, and damson jam. So a few jams in there for you canners as well. Uh, okay, let's see. Artisan-style loaves, um, Portuguese mountain rye, uh, baguettes, uh, pugliers, sponge breads, uh, special spiced rye from Gotland, salt-raised bread, chickpea spice breads, um, garlic, no, Galician hearth bread with whole corn, uh, smooth onion rye, pepper bacon ring, hazelnut currant pool, I'm just like, I really, honestly, my mouth is watering just talking about all this stuff. Look at the bread. Look at the bread in the pans and tell me that is not just, oh, it's just gorgeous. All right. Um, let's get to the next section here. I'm really trying to cruise through this for you guys because I want to just tell you about everything in here. Rose bagels and sweet buns, um, olive panini, Vietnamese mini baguettes, rum raisin rolls, baker's sign pretzels, Montreal bagels, sweet potato dinner rolls, bran muffins, rice flour mini muffin cakes, sweet anise bagels, Beirut tahini swirls, cranberry chocolate sweet buns, Chelsea buns, Taipei coconut buns, truck stop cinnamon rolls, chocolate bread batons, rich and sticky buns. I mean, man, oh, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. It's just, I mean, this book is so exciting. I, I, I'm sorry, I just keep going on and on and on, but it's just, there is some really amazing things in here. Skillet breads and pancakes, um, cardamom scented sweet potato roti, um, Welsh cakes, cathead skillet biscuits, Bahian kisses, Lebanese saj bread, mountain women's roti, Tibetan overnight skillet breads, um, Russian apple pancakes. Archie's coming for a visit, as you can see. He's very nosy. Um, Russian apple pancakes, uh, buckwheat crepes, Czech potato pancakes, homestyle dosa. Savory Bangkok waffles with dipping sauce, Ventry sour Ventry sourdough pancakes, sweet Ramadan half moons, Thai twills. Ugh. I mean, all right. Sorry about that, folks. My battery died, so <laughs> clearly I'm being a little long-winded. So we're gonna try and get through the end of this. So I left off with Thai twills. Um, so we're gonna move on from there. Just, I mean. Really, honestly, it, I just can't stop looking at the photography in here. It's just really something else. Right, let's see. Did I miss the... Okay, everyday cakes and a few fancy ones, too. Um, Ukrainian honey cake, Polish Jewish cheesecake, buttermilk fruit cake, lemon pound cake, 
Naomi's Any Day Skillet Cake, Brazilian Bolo, Childhood Gingerbread with Molasses, uh, Lemon Jelly Roll, Semolina 1-2-3 Cake, Uzbek Layered Walnut Confection, Bread and Butter Cake. I mean, it, it just goes on. I'm not even listing everything in here. I mean, I'm just highlighting. I mean, here's another beautiful example of the photography. I mean, just stunning, stunning photography. Uh, I don't It's really... I, I just think this book needs to be loved and enjoyed. Um, then it goes into... Uh, different cookies, Persian style cookies, Russian cookies. Um, the back of it talks about different ingredients, uh, kind of gives you like, I mean, just amazing definitions of different ingredients, um, different tools. It's just, uh, the book is just really, really well done. Gives you conversions and pan sizes. Um, pretty much everything you need to, to, to bake through this book. So again, this is what it looks like without the cover. This is what the book jacket looks like. Um, home baking. I mean, this is, this is really truly home baking because, like I said, even though some of these recipes are global recipes and recipes that are from far off in exotic places to many of us. I mean, some people are very well traveled and have seen all of these things. I have not. Um, so for me, this is a way to live through these recipes and experience other cultures and other parts of the world. And like I said, these recipes have really been made incredibly accessible to the home cook. Um, don't be afraid of them. Give them a try try and find this book. Like I said, I'll do my best to put links below for you. Um, but you know, check out your used bookstores, talk to the library, see if they might, because sometimes libraries sell off copies of books if they have them and they're, you know, not renting, like if people aren't checking them out, that's another resource. Um, so, you know, look around, see what you can find. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, cookbook corner episode as much as I have. This is a book that I just truly, truly love. Um, if you did come back and see us soon, make sure that you go watch all of these content creators, these amazing videos that are being put out, inspired by Needy at the Needy Homesteader. Um, there's just beautiful content out there. Enjoy it, and you know, it it really is something to behold. All of these amazing. YouTubers pulling together for a common cause really is inspiring. So as always, I hope you had a great day.